trying to say, I broke my hand. I said, what? Broke his hand? I said, I broke my right hand. It's broke. And so he just stood toe to toe. And if you look afterwards, he was landing right hands, but they were almost like clubbing right hands. They were not really the straight power punches that he used to shoot straight down the middle. These, these are clubbing punches, not that sharp time Aaron. You're right, in the first round, I thought he was gone. I thought Hagler was gone. I mean, he got hit a right hand, his whole body just went bloom. I mean, I saw him do that once with Mugabe, but I've never seen anybody hit as hard, hit Hagler as hard as Hearns did. And I thought, oh boy, he's got a chance. He's got a chance because he was swarming on him, you know? And I said, this guy's too physical for Tommy. By this time, I think, um, by the time we pick it up, we're going to show you almost the entire round. He's already hurt his hand. Yeah, I, I don't recall. I've never saw the fight in about once, I think. All right, so uh, now, we, now it's good. So then you're going to see it again. I'm, I don't blame you for never watching it. <laughs> <laughs> this is murder. All right, let's go. It's one minute and 28 seconds. Agler's already been in trouble, and, and oh, you can no. see that Hearns is fighting back. At this point right now, Tommy has already hurt the right hand. I can tell because he's throwing punches that you normally would never see Tommy Hearns throw those type punches. He's not able to shoot it straight because the impact of the bones, if the punch lands directly straight, would hurt him too much. So he's more club in the right hand now. Mm -hmm. and, Mar and Marvin Lions. is fighting perfect. Marvin is crowding him, staying in close, willing to take the punishment if necessary, keeping his chin close to his chest, which means that Tommy is forced to hit him often on the forehead instead of on the chin. Well, now, in, in what we just saw right now, most of those punches are right hand. Why isn't he using his left? I mean, he, you know, Tommy got a devastating left hook. He's not using it. But it's, it's all right hand. Well, first of all, Tommy don't fight this close. And Marvin is making him fight very close, which is very smart. And then the fact that Thomas' legs is hurt, he can't move that much. So he himself had to fight in fairly close. Not, not only that, uh, with the southpaw, it's easy to hit a southpaw if your right hand is straight down the pike with a straight right hand. It's difficult to throw a left hook over the right hand unless you get him square with the right hand down. But you know, Hagler is a complete fighter. He can competitive any time. I always thought, way before I became a great friend of Manny's, which I am, I think he's a hell of a guy, I've always thought Tommy Hearns would have been, would have been a better middleweight than a welter because he's big, big, big bone. He can hit a big man. Now, the fact is, the light hand way is competitive, but, but watch those right hands. They're, they're looping and not straight down the pike, and Hag is all over it. Tough, tough guy. You know, when we got back in the dressing room after the fight, Tommy says, first thing he asked, did the fans enjoy the fight? Because I said it was a good fight, man. He apologized to all of us for losing. And uh, he says, now, when we go out to the press conference after, he says, don't mention anything about my right hand being broke. Because Marvin fought a great fight. He laid out a good plan. It worked. And uh, the fans got the money's worth. And we don't do anything to take away from his glory. That was the best single round that I have ever seen. And maybe in the millennium i've never seen a round like as competitive as that give and take both of them banging both of them with their plans but you know marvin hagler people have asked me who the most complete fighter i ever saw when you talk about dedication discipline tending the business training doing what had to be done he was as complete a machine that i've ever seen the good thing about this fight is that we're both at the height of their power you didn't get one guy sliding down or another guy coming up. No. These are two guys. They ain't going to get any better than this. Marvin was a great fighter. He could adjust to whatever style was necessary. If he fought a Wilford Scipion or someone that was shorter, he became a consummate boxer. If he fought a tall guy like Oba Mahal Satami, he would become a slugger. He could do anything in the book. Nonetheless, it doesn't take away from what we have addressed today, that Hagler at his very best, that Hearns at his very best. They had to the mental makeup of the, the desire to win and refuse to lose type attitude. And that's what makes great fights. It's not talent, it's the insides of athletes who refuse to lose is what makes the great fights. Absolutely. So we come to the end of this series of rather interesting inside untold stories which you have given us. Certainly the fracture of the hand, I didn't even know about that. Since ancient times, boxing has fascinated and thrilled fans with its unique blend of one-on-one -on -one competition, guile, primordial brutality, and strategy. And in this special, you've seen boxing at its best. Now, it's time to reveal the Fight Doctor's rankings on the 12 greatest rounds of boxing from the bottom up. In 12th place. Purdy picks the 13th round of Sugar Ray Robinson's sixth encounter with the Raging Bull, Jake LaMotta. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre, 1951. 
In 11th place, Ferdy selects the 13th round of the first title bout between Rocky Marciano and Jersey Joe Walcott. The Punch, 1952. The Fight Doctor's 10th pick is the first and only round of Muhammad Ali versus Sonny Liston, The Phantom Punch, 1965. In ninth position, Ferdy picks round 14 of the first fight between Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard, The Comeback Kid, 1981. In eighth place, Ferdy goes with Khan's Gamble, the 13th round of Joe Lewis versus Billy Khan, 1941. In seventh position, Dr. Pacheco reaches back to 1927 and the long count in Jack Dempsey's second matchup with Gene Tunney, round number seven. In sixth place, the Fight Doctor selects the blind round, Cassius Clay versus Sonny Liston, round four in 1964. In fifth place, the Fight Doctor goes back to 1919 and the first round of Dempsey versus Willard, The Massacre. In fourth place, eyewitness Ferdy Pacheco picks Ali Foreman, round number eight, The Rumble in the Jungle, 1974. Ferdy's third pick is Joe Lewis's rematch with Max Schmeling, The Revenge, round one. The Fight Doctors runner-up in our march toward the greatest round of all time is the 14th and final round of the Ali Frazier matchup, The Thriller in Manila, 1975. The Fight Doctors all-time greatest round is War, the first round of Pagler versus Hearns, April 15th, 1985. Now, go to your computer and email us at 12 rounds at show.com with your comments and selections. That's 12 rounds at sho.com.